to your lecture on community education, planning and evaluation. This lecture falls into the community and public health nursing. And it's all about what kind of uh, community health events, education um, need to happen in a community and how do we use the nursing process to understand how to plan that. So let's get into it. There are three goals for this lesson. First, apply all steps of the nursing process to community health program planning and evaluation. Second, explain the importance of community partnerships in community programming. And finally, describe strategies and models to assist with community health program assessments, planning, implementation, and evaluation. Before we even walk through the nursing process as it relates to community health planning, the first thing we need to talk about is gathering the right team. Community partnerships are an vital uh, part of any kind of community planning. And community partners can be a variety of stakeholders like healthcare organizations, individuals in the community that are leaders, community organizations and the people in those community organizations might be volunteer or they could be paid and then finally community gatekeepers community gatekeepers are important people in the community community that are valued respected listened to and you've got to get them on your team or you've got to get on their team in order for this change to happen because without their participation, their support, um, these kinds of initiatives will be blocked. So you've got to think about who are those gatekeepers in that community. The second tip here for gathering your team is how to build successful partnerships. Communities that have long-term sustained health promotion initiatives often have anchor institutions. These are typically healthcare organizations that are in the community that have large financial backing, and can kind of serve as the backbone to whatever initiative is going on. It's important that there is a foundation of respect, trust, and transparency as you build this partnership, and that clear communication is uh, valued both internally within your team as well as externally to the community on what your team is achieving. And finally, representation. This goes along with the trust and respect and transparency. Often these community initiatives are being accomplished in um, lower income areas, areas of more minority representation. And so we wanna make sure that our teams have people from the community. Um, EDIC versus EMIC is a understanding of culture. EDIC is outsider knowledge and EMIC is insider knowledge. And you want people in the community building their own programs and having a true partnership and voice in that process. Too often there's this God complex where people from outside the community try to sweep in and, and help with the community, but we really need that community engagement and true representation and voice of the people who live there. So when you are doing a community assessment and understanding what are the needs of this community from a health perspective, what how can we engage? You're gonna gather data both from primary and secondary sources. Primary sources are things you hear directly from the people who are saying it. Direct interviews, direct observations, community forums, and windshield surveys. And windshield surveys are exactly what it sounds like. You drive around in your car, and you look out the windshield and you see what you can see. What's the ex well, how many healthcare organizations are in the area? Do they have a pharmacy? Is there a liquor store in every corner? Is there a lot of graffiti? What do the buildings look like? Are they in good repair or are they broken down? Do they have access to healthy food or are there just convenient marks on the marks on the corner? These are the kinds of things you can gather from a windshield survey. And then secondary data is statistical data that's widely reported and available that any community health nurse can pull up. Things like the U.S. Census, uh, health statistics, crime rates, and school report cards are examples of secondary data. So when you're doing your community assessment, look for community assets. What's already going well in the community um, and what resources are already ex in existence? Things like people and organizations and structures and parks that are already available. What are the strengths of the community and where are the weaknesses? 
What are the opportunities for growth in that community? And then finally, looking at some examples of other community organizations that are already doing a good job. Now, of course, we can't just do a copy and paste of these other initiatives into a community, but you can use guiding principles of these initiatives um, as a sample for a new community health program. This could include examples like the Nurse Family Partnership, which has demonstrated in improved uh, wellness for new young families um, and mortality, infant, infant mortality rates. You can look at the Lawndale Christian Health Center in Chicago, which has demonstrated an incredible uh, program for reducing social determinants of health, increasing access to health care and healthy food in the Lawndale uh, population. And then finally, things like the Florida Ocean Alliance, which have really looked at um, healthy oceans and clean beaches in Florida. Um, now, of course, these things can't be copied and pasted directly, but they can be a good example on something to use as a model. Speaking of models, there are four models for assessments that we're going to describe today. There's other ones out there as well, but these are four main ones. And let's get into it. Now, the first one is called the change model, the community health assessment and group evaluation model. This model was created by the CDC, and it's an assessment tool that helps develop an action plan. It identifies strengths and weaknesses and opportunities for growth, and it uses group and group consensus building in decision making, making sure that multiple voices are heard. Now, there are eight sequential steps to this model, which are demonstrated in these blue boxes. Gather the team, develop a strategy, review the five change sectors. We'll talk about that in a second. Gather data, review data, then enter that data into a spreadsheet that can be analyzed, analyze that consolidated data, and then finally make an action plan. Now, the five change sectors that should be considered um, as they're developing this strategy are things like the community at large, healthcare and, uh, organizations, other community organizations in the area, schools, and work sites. The next assessment model is the PACE EH, Protocol for Assessing Community Excellence in Environmental Health. This was also created by the CDC, but this tool specifically is for community level environmental health assessments. It identifies local environmental health issues and sets priorities, targets at-risk populations, and creates an action plan. Examples of use include safe housing, street lighting, ADA accessible parks, safe drinking water, and crime rates. The third assessment model is the ecological model. This model recognized that factors on all levels must be addressed to promote community health as community health is a multifactorial issue. So it's identifying factors on the individual, interpersonal, organizational, community, and public policy levels. The Community Health Needs Assessment is also endorsed by the CDC. And this one came from the Affordable Care Act's requirement that not-for-profit hospitals must demonstrate community benefit. In other words, the Affordable Care Act said, all right, we're giving you all of these tax benefits and saving you million dollars on not having to pay taxes. Show us that it's worth it. Show us that you're benefiting the community. So the hospitals, not-for-profit hospitals, now have to produce this uh, report every th three years, and this report has to be publicly reported. This report um, provides hospital accountability and it also provides opportunities for advocates because now advocates and community health nurses can use these reports to get an assessment on a community. Now there's a couple things that hospitals have to show in their report. They have to show collaboration with community partners, evidence-based interventions, an ongoing process for evaluating their program and the use of community-wide data to drive their decisions. And the point of this model and point of this report was to improve collaboration, improve interconnected activities, strengthen partnerships, and identify strengths and weaknesses. Moving on to diagnosis. When we're trying to diagnose the problem or identify the issue with a community, the first thing we're going to look at is the data analysis. Data analysis should be an open and transparent process. 
An analysis of the data can determine the community's current needs. Certainly subpopulations should be included so that all people in a community are represented in the analysis. And it's recommended that statisticians are employed to run statistical analyses. Once you have this data, you can use a tool to help determine which priorities are most important. The reality is every community has multiple healthcare needs and determining which ones to work on can be a challenge and people can have different opinions. So there's four tools we're gonna discuss to help determine priorities. The simplex method, the nominal group technique, the Hanlon method and the strategy grid. The simplex method uses a questionnaire with closed end questions, and it's scored so that higher priorities end up having higher, higher scores. The nominal group technique um, is something that's used early in the early stages of group planning, and it really allows for group discussion and creation of space for multiple voices to be heard. Um, this is done by uh, group discussion and silent brainstorming that ends in a round robin of sharing ideas so that everyone has a chance to share their ideas. And ultimately this creates a list of prioritized actions by group importance. And sometimes this uh, method is used in connection with a different model on the second half of the process. Now the Hanlon method is more time consume, consuming, but it uses mathematical formation of uh, calculations to prioritize um, actions based on baseline data and weighted criteria. So different criteria that is being assessed gets different weights that are put into mathematical calculations and then uh, priorities are driven based on those calculations. And then finally, the strategy grid. The strategy grid is nice for weighing two competing categories. For example, impact versus cost, need versus feasibility. Um, and each solution that people come up with goes into a specific quadrant on the grid. And so the select solutions have to be coming from the high, high category. So you can see here on this example that um, need and feasibility, meaning is it possible, are the things that are being um, put into this grid. And so in the upper right quadrant, you see things that are high need and also high feasibility, meaning possible. So blood pressure screening program in a community with rapidly increasing rates of stroke is a high need and it's also something that they can make happen. In the left lower quadrant you see is low need and low feasibility. So in their assessment, investing in health education in Spanish with a community that has less than 1% non-Spanish, non-English speaking population um, was a low need um, compared to the high need, high feasibility. So again, not no need, but when you have to prioritize, the strategy grid can help get you there. A couple tips for planning and implementing. First, you utilize a guide for planning comprehensively. Um, these tools are available for free and often really helpful at guiding these process improvements. Include cultural competence, um, making sure that voices are represented and that cultural competence is considered. Use data to drive decision-making and use a team approach, making sure multiple voices are represented. Clear communication is important at all levels of community planning. It's, in, it's advised to write a situation statement. That's like an S-bar. It's the, it's the S of an S-bar. But instead of on an individual, it's about the community as a whole. What's the current situation? Make sure that your team has clear messaging internally and externally and identifies a spokesperson to be the voice and face of the initiative. Ensure that you incentivize engagement from community partnerships. What's in it for them? Why should they become part of your program? and identify goals and timelines so you can hold the team accountable to those. And then finally, consider long-term management and sustainability. It's not just about getting a program off the ground, who's gonna run it and maintain it after it's off the ground. Lastly, we look at evaluating when we think about the nursing process. And the first part of evaluating is measuring success, also known as data collection. Data collection can be from quantitative, qualitative, or mixed data. Quantitative data is numbers, things that can be calculated on a spreadsheet. 
Um, for example, the number of people who return to the hospital within 30 days of admission. Qualitative data are words and ideas and thoughts, not things that can be calculated with math. So it could be community opinions, um, questionnaires where they write down um, their sentiments about a program, and then those sentiments and thoughts are categorized into themes. Or it can be mixed data, which is both mixed uh, qualitative and quantitative data that's collected. It's important that a formal evaluation is done as the program um, implementation is done. And these formal evaluations are done at the end of implementation and done by an outside agency, a third party, to make sure that the data is um, not biased. And then utilize an evaluation tool. There are a number of tools here, and we're going to talk about them. First one is the change tool. We've already talked about the change tool in terms of assessment, but keep in mind that the change tool also takes you all the way through evaluation, so you could use that one as well. The next one is the impact report. Impact report is a document that's created to celebrate and share the success of a program and what impact it's had to a community. Now, you want to share the impact report publicly so that there is acknowledgement and celebration of the impact a specific program has had on a community, using data and statistics as much as possible. Now, the CDC has an evaluation for public health, which provides summary standards and framework for essential elements of program evaluation. And the University of Kansas also has a community impact tool that provides steps for evaluating a program. And these are available for free online. In fact, the University of Kansas, if you're really gonna be a community health nurse, they have 16 different toolkits available to help with uh, public health planning. Toolkits on things like implementing social marketing, policy development, grant writing, building leadership, and so on. That's gonna wrap it up for this chat on community education, planning, and evaluation. Thanks so much for listening. And as always, remember, you are smart, you are capable, you are loved, and you got this. See you next time.